ICRD has been in existence uh, for about 20 to 25 years, depending on how you define our our birth uh, into the world. We uh, are working in a number of countries around the world as both a not-for-profit, so we are both an NGO and we are an academic organization. Actually, interestingly, we are located within the School of Leadership Studies at Royal Road. So we also focus on issues of leadership development, particularly people working in the social sectors with children, youth, and families. Our mission is to uh, reinforce and realize and operationalize the UN Convention on the Rights of the Child, particularly child protection initiatives using a systems approach grounded in an ecological understanding of children's worlds uh, to apply children's rights in a more participatory approach. <clears throat> Over the years, uh, we've worked in about uh, 25 to 30 countries globally. As I say now, we're presently working in about six or seven countries, mostly in, um, in Latin America, Sub-Saharan Africa, Southeast Asia, and of course, Canada, where most of our work focuses on the rights of indigenous or Aboriginal children and the context of the work that Chris was describing and other participatory approaches. Um, our new endeavor with Royal Roads is called Child Protection in Development. Um, it brings a developmental approach to child protection. So we're really looking at development in three contexts. One is integrating current theory and knowledge on children's development, particularly development in adversity. So children growing up in difficult circumstances and the impact of adversity on children's developmental outcomes as well as looking at development from a community perspective. So integrating child protection into community development strategies. And finally, uh, encompassing you know, protection thinking and practice in the context of global drivers of development. So looking, for example, of, at the influence of global warming on children's outcomes and protection factors, as well as issues like migration and conflict and other global drivers of development. Uh, we're very interested in this, both in terms of the theory and practice on children's protection needs, but also looking at it from a practitioner point of view. So trying to come up with a new evidence-informed approach to practitioner training that's grounded in a number of understandings. The first of which is that we lead with uh, experience of children and knowledge of children's development, as I've explained. Uh, we use a strength or an assets approach to protection, which is grounded in the strengths of children's lives as a way of managing adversity or challenges for uh, risk factors. Uh, we're very interested in the power of ideas, which is our academic grounding. Uh, we work from the inside out. Michelle will talk about that in a moment in terms of beginning with both the lived experience of children, but also the personal experience and self-awareness of professionals and practitioners, which is incredibly important uh, when working in difficult circumstances with children. Uh, we're very interested in partnerships in the context of system strengthening, and as I say, particularly partnerships between government or INGOs and local communities in expanding support for children. And finally, we're very interested in this notion of formal and non-formal system strengthening, and I'll pass uh, the communication to Michelle at this point. So um, as Philip mentioned, the program has several different components. Um, and we always start with the self. So the self is really around understanding yourself as a practitioner, um, helping young people understand their own reality and hearing from them, but really that listening, the mindfulness, um, as well as self-care. Because one of the things um, we've seen globally is people that are focused on helping others sometimes forget to take care of themselves or their, you know, the work demands are very high. So they uh, end up burning out. So how do you really create something that's sustainable that really helps them to be able to build that? And the photograph that you can see in the center here was our piloting of this program recently. Yeah. The other component is knowledge. So looking at actual child protection systems, you know, holistic child development, um, Again, looking at the human, the community, and the international um, components of development and working with the vulnerable children and families. So being able to have the research base uh, as well as practitioners sharing their knowledge around, this, around these key issues. 
and skills. So what we were really finding, I mean, this program is, is based on about 20 years of experience and, and what we were hearing in the field in in the communities and, and from practitioners is like, okay, yes, we need current theory. Um, yes, we need to sort of understand our own biases and sort of how do we work in, but we, we need skills. Like we actually need the capacity and the skills to be able to, to do these things. So some of the key things that we focus on are, are how do you meaningfully engage with children, with youth, with families and with communities? Um, and so, you, you know, creating new tools so that really young people are involved in helping us develop that really look at being able to um, hear from them and understand their experience. Listening and talking with children and youth. So the listening piece, um, sometimes uh, as adults, we forget how to do. We're very good at talking sometimes, but not necessarily talking in a way that young people can understand. So being able to do um, those in a really effective way. Um, Strength-based reflections and inquiry. Um, that is a skill in terms of being able to look at what's actually going right. How do we actually build on things that are working rather than just look at what's wrong? Um, and then the building of partnerships. Uh, and that, that, that piece is in terms of partnerships that both from the community level all the way up to government, you know, looking at policy as well as practice. The other component of the program is really looking at monitoring and evaluation, so accountable action. So that's really um, based on um, having young people at the center, looking across the systems, using social media, rights-based, um, so looking at the Convention on the Rights of the Child, and also creativity and innovation. Um, so the, the, we've talked a lot about this. So the, again, the, the program is, is based as a university, but also within communities. So it, it's looking at a, a foundation of practice, creating new employment opportunities, um, evidence-based, strength-based, encouraging partnerships, fosters community, um, and really builds, a, I think, a community of, of practice where you can do face-to-face -face and online components. So that that's one of the pieces that um, I think is unique and will be able to build the knowledge base um, globally. Yeah, so and it's again, this is structured, it has specialized trainings, skill recognition, post-secondary, and the community of practice. Okay, that's it. Great.